Hello, friends. Welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. I am your host, Tom Downey, here to break down all of the Cowboys' offensive free agents this year. It'll be eight in total for the Cowboys, all of them unrestricted free. We'll start with the most important one and the most notable one as far as I'm concerned. That is Cole Beasley. Now, Scott Linehan, you could say leaving. I'm going to say fired, but LL, I want to keep it that way, gives the Cowboys a chance to retain Cole Beasley. If Linehan had stayed on staff, Cole Beasley, I don't think, was ever going to come back. I don't think he would have stuck around with the Cowboys. At that point, I think he would have wanted it out. So, Linehan staying or leaving gives the Cowboys a chance. Now, Beasley, I think he knows this is his last shot at a big contract. And the Cowboys, frankly, haven't used him as well as they could have in the past two years. And Beasley has said he wants to be paid like one of the highest paid slot receivers in the NFL. Now, look. He's had 65 catches for 672 yards and three TDs. And it's not a surprise that when the Cowboys actually target Beasley, he tends to make plays, especially on third down. Now, here are the highest paid slot receivers based only on their actual a annual average uh, money, so their, their salaries per year. Jarvis Landry, Doug Baldwin, Fitzgerald, Randall Cobb, Mohamed Sanu. The issue is a lot of those contracts were signed Several years ago, the salary cap goes up, so to do player salaries across the board. A, let's just say, 10% of the cap in 2016. Well, now the cap goes up by 20 million. 10% just becomes more or less 12% of the old cap. So the increase there will continue to go up, so you can get that extra money there. Now, how much would you guys pay Cole Beasley per year? Let me know in the comments section. I don't think the Cowboys would want to pay him anything more than seven, but I could genuinely see a scenario where Cole Beasley, Adam Humphreys, and others get $10 million per year on the open market. That's how free agency tends to work. NFL teams love to pay receivers, and Cole Beasley's film is actually really, really good, better than his numbers indicate. But let me know how much you guys would pay him in the comments section. And folks, if you haven't already, go subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, oh, the link's right there, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. If you're watching on Facebook, it's there too. YouTube, just hit the button. We'll have news, rumors, NFL draft coverage, free agency coverage, and fan-led content like our mailbags and our live Q&A. So subscribe if you guys haven't already. All right, more Cowboys offensive free agents. How about Tavon Austin? We'll stick there with the Cowboys wide receivers. Now, the, the 12 to 24 touches a game, that was never going to happen. Tavon Austin was never going to get that amount of money or that amount of touches per game. It never made sense. 12 to 24 snaps was far more likely for Tavon Austin. Now, look, he is never going to be as good as we want him to be. Injuries are a factor there, but we've seen Tavon Austin in multiple different schemes. And every time, he feels like he just underwhelms. Maybe he needs to adjust the expectations there. Now, he brings you playmaking in the return game, and that's a big deal for me. I think if you can get him back at the right price, go for it. Now, injuries have always and will be an issue. I'm not interested in paying Tavon Austin multiple millions of dollars per year with a bunch of guaranteed money. But if he wants to come back on a cheaper one-year prove-it type deal, sign me up. But again, Tavon Austin is not going to be the focal point of the Cowboys offense. If they lose Cole Beasley, maybe they do re-sign Tavon Austin and get him a little bit more involved out of the slot, as we saw at times once Cole Beasley had his ankle injuries this year. So what should the Cowboys do with Tavon Austin? Type R for re-sign, type L for let leave. DM me on Twitter. I'll throw you guys a suggested contract for Tavon Austin. But I am willing to re-sign him, but it has to be at the right price. All right, next up, tight end. That is Jeff Swain, the unrestricted free agent. And the issue for Swain, beyond just his injury problems in the past, is that Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin stepped up with Jeff Swain out. And do you need Jeff Swain when Dalton Schultz and or Blake Jarwin can do an equally good job or even just combined and they're younger and cheaper and have maybe more room to develop and grow? You can draft a tight end as well. So I don't think the Cowboys need to re-sign Jeff Swain. Now, if no one has any interest in him and he's a cheap one-year deal for like a million or two million, maybe at that point say, cool, but let's bring him back. But I don't think Jeff Swain is going to be a super high priority for the Cowboys in terms of offensive free agents. Then again, there really aren't all that many super high ones in terms of importance out there. Now, should the Cowboys draft a tight end in the first three rounds? Type Y for yes, type N for no. DM me on Twitter. I'll throw out some potential names. I actually lean more towards no right now. 
I'd rather target a slot receiver if it comes to that, if you lose Cole Beasley, and a defensive tackle as well. Today's show is brought to you by BetDSI. It's the internet's number one sportsbook. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. So you put down 50 bucks, and BetDSI is going to give you 60 for free. Put down 100 and they're going to give you 120 And if you deposit with Bitcoin... It'll be a 150% deposit bonus. So put down 100, they'll give you 150. Now, we know that not necessarily all of you are super familiar with Bitcoin, and I get why. So if you need help with that, DM us on Twitter, at Chat Sports. We'll get you guys hooked up. Put down 100 bucks and use Bitcoin. You get 30 more than you would normally if you use MasterCard. All right, more offensive free agents. Cameron Fleming was not good in the preseason. I thought he struggled. I thought he looked outmatched at times. I wasn't very interested in the way Cam Fleming played. The good news was he was better in the preseason and he became kind of your average swing tackle. Now, Fleming could look for a bigger role with another team this offseason. Had three starts and a handful of other snaps scattered throughout the rest of the season because of injuries. Allowed five hurries, two hits, two sacks. He's serviceable. He gets the job done. He's not better than Lael Collins by any means. I think there's a decent chance that Fleming says, you know what, I know I'm stuck behind Lyell. Maybe I can go get a, or at least a chance to compete for a starting role with a different team. Maybe he ends up leaving, but if he comes back cheap, sign me up. There's no such thing as too much depth on the offensive line as long as it's cheap depth. Running back Rod Smith, who I know many of you like, and I do understand why, unrestricted free agent, but he didn't produce as well as he did in previous years, back in 2017. Now, he could be cheap, but I also expect the Cowboys to spend a draft pick on Rod Smith. Look at his 2018 stat, or on, on the running back spot. 44 carries, 127 yards. That's not what we saw in 2017. I'm down to bring back Rod Smith if he's cheap, but... I think the Cowboys are going to look for another running back. He might end up being your number three back next year by the end of the year if they do end up drafting someone in the earlier rounds of the NFL draft, maybe round four, round five. All right, Cowboys Nation, thank you so much for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, go subscribe, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys where we do all kinds of stuff for you. NFL Draft, free agency, live Q&As, mailbags, all that there, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. And then go follow me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowny. I check my DMs. I answer most of your questions on Twitter. If I miss it, just send it to me again. I'll probably catch it the second time. That's at WhatGoingDowny. Got all kinds of Cowboys coverage on there as well. How about a fullback? Jameez Olawali, an unrestricted free agent, didn't have any real impact on the offense this year. He dropped a touchdown pass. Two catches, 13 yards in total, a little bit more action later on in the year. The Cowboys, though, like to have a fullback on their active roster. I would think that Jameez Olawali is cheap, and he does bring you special teams value as well, was one of the leading special teams tacklers this year. It's an unrated aspect of the game. Look, you don't need to throw money at Olawali. If you want to just bring him back in and then add a, a rookie fullback to compete, I'm down with that as well. That's why he's kind of near the bottom here of these Cowboys offensive free agents. All right, one more true offensive free agent. We'll get to the other guy here that I'm kind of teasing in a second. Marcus Martin, an unrestricted free agent, missed all of this year with an injury, got hurt during camp, and then never came back. The Cowboys have actually some pretty solid interior offensive line depth already because they traded for a guy like Parker Ehringer. So they can bring back Marcus Martin. It'd be a cheap one-year deal with, I would assume, no guaranteed money. If he makes the roster, great. If not, he can, you know, maybe get picked up by somebody else. But at, his, at this point, the former third-round pick, trending more and more like a bust. At least he brings you some center and guard flexibility. Of course, Joe Looney has that job on lockdown, but maybe you want a third in case Looney doesn't come back because I assume Frederick will also be back this year. All right, folks, I'm wearing a Mizzen and Main shirt. If you want one of your own, go check out comfortable.af. You guys are not going to find a more comfortable shirt, dress, or otherwise. It makes me look passable on air. Just imagine what it could do for you. Go check them out, comfortable.af. One final free agent, LP Leducer, the long snapper. It is a good thing when you when a lot of people don't know your long snapper's name because if they do their job right, their name never, ever gets mentioned on, on a broadcast. They only get mentioned if there's a bad snap or a garbage penalty infraction against the Washington Redskins, for example. LP has been perfect for the Cowboys in terms of snaps, has never had a bad snap. 
They're always perfect. They're not high. They're not low. This is the dude who is the goat of long snappers. Now, he's 37 years old. At a certain point, he'll probably just want to retire. But as long as, he, as long as he wants to play, as long as he continues to never make mistakes, he has a spot on this Cowboys roster. So look, I know he could retire at any point. I don't know if he will this year. So bring him back and you're fine at long snapper. If not, for the first time since 2005, the Cowboys would actually need to go find a new long snapper if LP steps away. All right, to recap, the Cowboys' offensive free agents, Rod Smith, Jimmy Zolawali, Tavon Austin, Cole Beasley, really four of, I think, your more notable names there. And then Jeff Swaim, Cam Fleming, Marcus Martin, and LP Leducer. Those are your eight offensive free agents this year for the Dallas Cowboys. So I ask you this question here. Who is the most important Cowboys' offensive free agent? For me, it's Cole Beasley. I'm open to hearing stuff on Tavon Austin, but in general, the Cowboys actually don't have that many big free agents in general, both offensive and defensive. We'll break down defensive later on, so go subscribe, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. That video will be up in the very near future. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.